Hi, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now. Let's look at some viewer email. Clem writes, I'm looking for a fast single keystroke shortcut or click way to save a web page I'm currently looking at. I'm using a Mac with Mac OS 10.5.1, either Safari or Firefox. Well, I'm glad you're open to using Firefox for this because there's probably really no good way to do it in Safari. You also noted in your email that you can save it as a PDF, but it's just too many keystrokes, and it is. Uh, you have to choose the type of PDF, you have to choose where to save it, and all that. I did find a couple of quick ways to do it in Firefox. There's two Firefox add ons that you can get for Firefox. One is called Scrapbook, and it actually works inside Firefox to save pages as a list inside them. But I also found that you can export them as well, and it will save them in their native format. So it's HTML, and you're saving GIFs, you're saving JPEGs, and all of that. But it is very fast to use. Just one click or one keystroke will do it. Another extension I found is one called Screen Grab. And Screen Grab will actually save it as a PNG, which means it can be very large file sizes. But it does give you the option of saving exactly what you see on the screen or the entire web page. I also hear that Firefox 3.0 will have the ability to save out PDFs natively. Now, I don't know how that's going to differ from how we already do it in any application on the Mac, but maybe it'll be single click. We'll have to wait and see. But until then, here's two good alternatives. Hopefully, one of them will work for you. Tyler asks, is there a way to have a Wi-Fi internet connection and use my Ethernet port on my laptop to supply internet to another computer? Actually, I was surprised to find that there is a way to do this. A very easy way, actually, in Leopard. All you need to do is go to the System Preferences and go to Sharing. And in Sharing, you can choose Internet Sharing. And from there, you can share over Airport, Firewire, or Ethernet. Now, I haven't really tried any of these, but we can see how it's set up here. And turn on Ethernet sharing, start Internet sharing. And now it should work if you actually plugged in an Ethernet cable to other computers. And supposedly you could do it also over Firewire. It may even be able to do this over Airport. Uh, so actually getting an incoming connection and also sharing one out. Although I think the Airport connection is probably for getting a wired connection in and then you can just Airport to share out. I'd like to hear from some listeners that have a setup like this and if it's worked for them. Lynn writes, is there a way to manage podcasts in iTunes so that episodes you wish to keep can be placed permanently in a personal playlist or smart playlist and then deleted from its original podcast location? Well, Lynn, yes and no. I mean, for something to be in iTunes or be in iTunes so it transfers to your iPod or iPhone, it has to be in the library somewhere. And don't confuse the library with playlists. Playlists are basically a list of links to things in your library. Your library is everything that's contained there. So you can actually browse through your library or you can browse through your playlist. Now I think what you really want to be able to do is only look at your podcast in your playlist. For instance, I have tons of podcasts in my iTunes collection. But I never look at them in the library because there's just too many of them. Instead, I have smart playlists set up and I look at those to see what the most recent episodes are. For instance, here's how to set up a smart playlist that shows you your most recent episodes of all your podcasts. Now here's iTunes. You can see I've got a whole bunch of podcasts in the podcast folder. And I don't want all of these episodes to be transferred to my iPod or even see them in the list. One thing I can do then is create a Smart Playlist. Choose File, New Smart Playlist. Now the dialog is almost custom made for this because you can basically go and say I want Podcast is True. And I can also say uh, Limit to a certain number of items, say last five items, um, selected by uh, Let's see, most recently added. And uh, make sure Live Updating is selected. Click OK. And I can name this uh, a Recent Podcast. And you can see it only puts most recently downloaded podcasts in here on only five of them. It will automatically update as I add new podcasts. It's even better as I can select this Smart Playlist to sync with my iPod or iPhone. So I instantly only get the most recent podcasts on my iPod and iPhone. And then when I actually go to listen to podcasts in iTunes, I just select this playlist and ignore the very large podcast library directory. Well, that's all for now. Remember, if you have any questions, you can email me at questions at macmost.com. I also want to remind everybody that next week is going to be a whole special week. We'll be spending most of it at the Macworld Expo and we'll be reporting live from there. If you're at the Macworld Expo, be sure to look for us and say hi. So next week, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.